Welcome to our 2022.04 release, our second public release of the year. We had some beta releases in between, thus the reason for the jump from 2022.01 to 2022.04. You didn't miss anything. Sorry, but this training has a lot to cover, so it'll be a bit longer than usual. The speed of moving loadables has really made loading life difficult. So we took another stab at increasing the speed of moving loadables. Here we have the 2022.01 release. Wait for it. Now here we have the 2022.04 release. Quite the night and day difference. Our IFC library we used required updating, so we could eventually permit IFC 4 and other benefits of using a new library. Since load planning completely relies on IFC, this change has a big impact on us and our testing. What you will notice is that it will take a little longer to import your models, at least till we get time to optimize this. Also, we worked on code to improve the way we determine the main material. We can see the main material in the loadable by the white color. Notice here on the stair and the rail, we now only have one main material indicated by the white color. A little background. We will continue to support the ability to use the export to Tecla EPM feature, which allows you to export your load name to the lot number field in Tecla PowerFab using the production controls Excel import. Data can also still be imported from Trimble Connect and Tecla PowerFab into SDS2 load planning using the CSV import. But due to Tecla PowerFab's growing popularity among our clients, we felt it was necessary to make the information transfer easier and more seamless. Thanks to the PowerFab API and the generous assistance from the Tecla PowerFab personnel, we were able to develop this first stage of interface. What is extremely important to remember is that SDS2 load planning will find the members in PowerFab by matching the piece mark and sequence. This will be expressed further in the presentation. The next critical point is that trailers created in Tecla PowerFab by SDS2 load planning will be under the complete control of the SDS2 load planning. This means any modifications performed in Tecla PowerFab load tracking on trailers that were added by SDS2 load planning will be overwritten when you sync. In short, SDS2 load planning is the source of truth for the trailers that it adds into Tecla PowerFab. Finally, only trailers are going to be added to load tracking in PowerFab and not any bundles created in SDS2 load planning. So, what will be pushed and pulled when you run sync? We are pulling from Tecla PowerFab the lot number and approval status, which will be available for filtering using the properties that were added. Notice, before the sync, we do not have the approval status or the lot number. Here in Tecla PowerFab, we see the IFF issued for fabrication and the lot number of two. In my load tracking, you can see I have a trailer that I manually created in PowerFab. When I push sync in load planning and select the project in Tecla PowerFab to sync with, We now see that we have the approval statuses and lot number properties that I can use to filter. We did not get any trailers updated yet in Tecla PowerFab because we've not loaded any yet in load planning. Another important point. After you perform a sync, you'll need to remember to save your project. I'm now going to load a trailer with a few loadables.
we have the load name, trailer name, which can be repeated since the same trailer can be used for several shipments on a project, and the planned ship date. When I sync, and then open up PowerFab load tracking, we see that we have the load data populated with the trailer capacity. We see the material that is planned to be loaded. We do not put it in the loaded tab since that will be indicated by the loader at loading time. Notice that the Tecla PowerFab manually created trailer is still there. I'm going to remove some loadables from the trailer and modify the ship date and load name. After I sync, we see the PowerFab is updated. During the sync, the status, lot number, and trailers are all updated at the same time. If I were to remove a load in load planning and then sync, the load would also be removed from the power fab after the sync. Now to point out a few things. If you change the sequence in Tecla Power Fab, making it different from the IFC file in SDS2 load planning, the member will not be found since, as stated, we match on the piece mark and the sequence. I'll talk more about this in the next section on setting up. If you have a member in Tecla PowerFab that is already loaded manually onto a trailer, it will not be added to the trailer load that is being synced. If the member does not exist yet in Tecla PowerFab, of course it won't be added to the load. If the member is set to ship to be galvanized and has not yet been returned, it will not be added to the load. Galvanizing is something that we're going to have to look into, as well as some better reporting for you. Now, we will move on to setting up. The SDS2 load planning help page is well documented on this, but I'll demonstrate this to a degree in this video. If you do not have Tecla PowerFab's remote server set up, you will want to set that up following the instructions that Tecla PowerFab provides. Remote server must be up and the service running. In load planning under settings and in preference, you will see PowerFab settings. It is important that you have access to the network. Not only access, but permissions set to exchange data to SDS2 load planning through the open port. You may need IT to set up permissions through the firewall. Now, add in the IP address, port, username, and password. This can be found by running your Tecla EPM's remote monitor and looking at your setting. Be sure you are also signed into your Trimble account. Another method to obtain the IP address is to type in CMD, that is command prompt, in the Windows Start on the remote host computer. Then at the prompt, type in ipconfig space slash all. A list of information will open up. Look in that list for IPv4 address, preferred. Fill in the IP address in the port in load planning. Now, for the username and password, run from the Windows Start menu, Tecla EPM Admin, and then log in. Select at the top left, File, and select Administration from the list. Select the External Users tab and use that username and password assigned to that username. If you've not created one, create one. Next, be sure to allow and set your remote permissions for the user. This is accessed from the button on the bottom right. Allow Remote Login must be checked and Production Statuses and Shipping Status options. I usually check them all instead of cherry picking items, but consult your Tecla PowerFab administrator. Save your remote permissions. Once you have completed the Tecla PowerFab side, 
in the SDS2 load planning, add in your username and password. To verify the process, hit the test connection button. If all went well, you will have a successful result. For those of you that like to set different sequences in Tecla PowerFab, we've added the ability to map a user property to populate the sequence that is used in Tecla PowerFab. This option is an all or nothing feature. You will be required to select all the loadables and add in the sequence that matches those modified in Tecla PowerFab. Again, I stress that this is used only if you're changing the sequence in Tecla PowerFab, causing different sequences between SDS2 load planning and, you guessed it, Tecla PowerFab. To use this, you have to create the user property first. So I will close settings and open the add properties. I'll create a property called TPF sequence, add it and close it. Then I'm going to open settings, preferences, and then select the property. If no property is selected or you hit clear, then the IFC sequence will be used. Now, you are responsible to modify all the loadables and apply the sequence value to the user property that matches the sequence in Tecla PowerFab. I'm going to use my filters to help me assign the sequences in SDS2 load planning to make updating this easier, depending on the change that's made. For example, if I was only going to be setting the prefix or suffix to a sequence. I'm going to add in an S12 to the TPF sequence property. Modify filter to show the sequence to finish us off. Now when the sync is performed, it will use the user property value to match the sequence in Tecla PowerFab. We do know there will be more features required, and we expect all kinds of feedback, but this will be an effective start in this communication process between load planning and PowerFab. I am very excited about this auto stack feature as we begin to add in some long awaited automation to SDS2 load planning. Before we dive into this new feature, we have made a modification to the way angles are loaded in general. When you load an angle, it will now be rotated into the toe resting position. Before we begin with auto stacker, for the system to be able to detect that a loadable is an angle and the leg size is used for grouping, there has to be a property in the IFC file to read this data. In SDS2, the cross section and material type are there by default when they're exported, but these properties are not exported by default with Tecla structures. It is then very important that when you are exporting an IFC file from Tecla structures that you have checked the profile and profile type properties. Please see the SDS2 load planning help for step-by-step -step instructions on how to set these properties to permanently be exported. It's really quite simple. Since we're on the topic of exporting from Tecla structures, when exporting an EM11, the assembly weight is also not exported by default. We need to have base quantities net weight property or the Tecla quantity weight property exported in the EM11 to be able to calculate the weight of the loadables in SDS2 load planning. I will begin by showing the auto stack angle tool, then we'll dig into the specifics. You can select the entire model and the system will stack all loadables that are only a single angle. All the other selected loadables will be sorted out of the list. The sorted table will be displayed with the size, quantity, and maximum number of angles for the stack. A tip is if you type a zero for maximum number of angles, that section size will not be stacked. Any bundles that meet the set maximum number of angles from the table will be set to complete, placing them on the staging list. These are ready to be loaded onto a bundle or trailer. Those that do not meet the maximum number of angles will be set to loading. You will notice a different bundle icon for auto stacked angles on the loading list. 
The icon indicates that these auto stack bundles are not the same as our other bundles. Auto stack bundles are under control of the system and therefore user interaction is limited. You can see that we stack these tighter than a manually created bundle. We could do this because of this system control. The permitted manual interaction will consist of modifying the statuses between complete and loading, modifying the bundle name, delete an angle from the stack. Did you notice that the bundle was restacked automatically? Any deleted angles from the stack, either manually or by a revision update, are placed back in the staging view, not on the staging list. On the right side of the auto stacked entry on the loading list, you'll see the weight of the stack and the number of pieces on the stack. The criteria used for stacking is same leg size, longest to shortest angles from bottom to top, and thickness is grouped in the stack. If you do not want to mix the thickness in the stack, I suggest you use the filters and select the angles you want to stack by section size, as I am demonstrating now. First, I'm going to go ahead and stack a few so we can look at the table and how it functions. Let's take a closer look at how the table works. Now, when we view the loading list, we see stacks angle two by two and angle six by four that are not full and are set to loading. When I go back to the staging view and select some more angle two by two and six by four angles and auto stack, we see in the table the selected angles and their quantity, plus the stacks that still can have more angles added are enabled. Side note, if a bundle is set to loading, it will not be disabled in the list and you'll be able to add more angles to the stack. You can check the enable stacks to have more angles added. I'm only going to check the angle 2x2 two two stack. Note that there were only six angle 6x4s six selected and the enabled stack of 6x4s is 5. The enabled 2x2 two two stack has 1 and 7 were selected. You can see that the angle 2x2 two two stack in loading has increased to 8 angles, 7 plus 1, and it did not reach 10, so it is still in loading. The angle 6x4 stack remains at 5, since we did not add a check for that stack in the table and a new angle 6x4 stack was created with the six selected angles. I'll leave you to further investigate the table's functionality. I will finish with the model update. This was a lot of work and is described further in depth in the help documentation, but we do handle revisions for stacks as well. In this example, I'll show a length-only modification on a stack. We see in the loading view that we have three short and three long angles. After the update, we see the four long and two short angles and the stack was rebuilt. This was only a simple example to prove that the work was done. We've gone through and made sure we handled all conditions from simple to complex. Again, I'm sorry for this long video, but we did have a lot to cover. Next release will be in September 2022, and we'll have even more fantastic features to increase your productivity.